All right, folks, we are back, and joining us now is Niger Innes, my friend for a long, long time, and executive director of uh, the Tea Party.net and national spokesman for the Congress of Racial Equality. Hello, my friend Niger. How are you, Steve? I'm my, my friend, for far too many years now, we need to admit <laughs> on air. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm proud to say that, and um, uh, let's tar turn to uh, the business at hand here. Uh, what do you think will be the announcement now that the grand jury has been dismissed after making the decision? You know, I'm really torn. You know, on, on the one hand, I was thinking, you know, I was thinking very seriously those leaks that were leading to uh, Darren Wilson being completely acquitted, totally acquitted, uh, with no charges filed against him. I'm now torn and thinking that uh, it is a possibility, and I'd give it probably a 30 70 chance that he will be convicted of, uh, not convicted, obviously, charged with one of the lower offenses. Uh, manslaughter to the third degree, I believe, is one of the lower offenses or charges. Um, I, I believe that, Steve, simply because the jury, uh, the type of evidence that the jury asked uh, to re-examine, for example, one of the, uh, I think, the forensic experts uh, that was employed by the Brown family uh, came back and testified again before the grand jury. Uh, and, I, and I believe, so if my chronology is correct, he did it uh, like within the last week or so. So that leads me to believe that um, he could very well be charged with one of the lower offenses. Although I, I believe, uh, you know, that you never heard from him in front of the media, but his assistant who conducted the autopsy with him for the grand jury, we're talking about the family's uh, autopsy, consistently said that, you know, the hands, should, it could have been either way. They could have been up saying, you know, I surrender, or they could have been not not in that. They could have been, you know, like a, a part of him like moving or so that wasn't, I, I, I never felt that that family attorney's autopsy was definitive in favor of the, uh, the family. But nonetheless, um, I'm with you to an extent because um, I just think that these people unfairly, unfair to them and unfair to the, to, to the officer, are under tremendous pressure. And, and they might just say, let it go to trial. It's not our problem. You know, let them handle it. Why should I, you know, my, my family be in danger? Why should I be in danger? Let's indict the guy and then let the, uh, the jury handle it. And I don't think that's the right way to do things, but I think that's that, what they might do. That is, a, that is a terrible way. If that is the reason, and the rationale, and you could very well be right, Steve, if that is the reason and the rationale, that is an abysmal thing to do. That is what you call mob justice. Yep. And that was not good for black folk, you know, for a couple hundred years in, in, in the antebellum South and in uh, the post-Reconstruction uh, era, uh, uh, segregation South. And it's not good today for Officer Wilson if that is the case. Yeah, no, absolutely. I want you to hear a cut. Uh, this will be 52, T, uh, 52, if we, could, if we could get it up. Uh, this is Mayor Giuliani with Michael Eric Dyson. Um, uh, on, I believe it was on Meet the Press, uh, believe it or not. And uh, here's part of that conversation. We are talking about the significant exception. 93% of blacks are killed by let me, other let me blacks. Tell you, let, me, let me respond I would to that. Like to see, I would like to see the attention. To I'd like to see the attention paid to that that you are paying to this and the solutions to that. He's taking up the time. All right. Uh, you know, Giuliani went on to make some controversial comments about the, you know, that the cops wouldn't be there if you weren't killing each other, um, meaning blacks, I guess. But uh, nonetheless, this is, you know, this is something that... Uh, Michael Eric Dyson, uh, I would imagine, uh, and others like Al Sharpton uh, don't want to focus on. Uh, absolutely not. Uh, these boys make their bones, their money, on racism. Real, imagined, uh, 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 peripheral, non-existent. Just the word racism, you know, is how they make their bones. And the, the, the fact of the matter is, is the way they execute their activism, black life that is snuffed out by another black person has no meaning. It has no value. No value. Black life only matters if it's taken by a white person, and then it really matters if it's taken by a white cop. And, and, and that is the point that Giuliani was making. You know, a lot of folk have said, oh, well, you know, the fact that 93% of young black men are killed by other young black men is irrelevant. 
because 80% of white people are killed by other white people. But wait a minute. Is there a crisis with the death and the homicide rate of young black men? I would answer yes. Yeah. There is a crisis. A absolutely. There's a, there's a genocide that is taking place with young black men. So if that is true, then the 90 percentile that is responsible for that genocide needs to be a part of the conversation. Yep. Niger, great talking to you, my friend. Say hello to your dad, and we'll speak to you soon. Niger Innes, ladies and gentlemen. God bless. You two up next, Deputy Press Secretary for the RNC, Rafi Williams.